the audience here will be delighted that the football results last night. Yeah. A lot of you don't you know? Mm -hmm. No, I don't know. Yeah. Um, a company was established over 50 years ago. Um, it's a company still over the run by the family. Um, the, the title is Green Combustion Can Biomass Relieve the Use of Fossil Fuels? Well, coming from South Wales, sitting on 300 years of coal, mm. uh, and with a massive unemployment to a certain extent, I hope it doesn't, but there we are. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my presentation on biomass relief the use of fossil fuel. But before starting, I would like to thank Mr. Massimo Bernini for allowing me to give this speech today. I'm Michele Bernini, I work for Bernini Impianti, and Bernini Impianti has a long history, tradition, it was founded in the late 50s by one guy, Sergio Bernini, who founded in Bologna. And then the tradition went on to the second generation, that is Massimo Bernini, the now actually CEO of the company, and who is leading the company since 1987. And then come the third generation, that is me, I'm giving this speech today, and I'm recently joined the, the company. And the company is based in Bologna. I hope most of you maybe might know where it is, because it's really famous ceramic care in Italy. And we always been settled there, but since the very first beginning, we always try to export our products all over the world. Then what we do, the mean is well known to be uh, Burners and equipment required for the heavy clay industry. We've been working in this field for more than 50 years. And along all this time, we acquired a deep knowledge in this field, and we are willing to share this knowledge to the customer in order to solve this problem and to give him an improvement in terms of profit and quality of the product, as we can see on the company. And along all this year, the goal of Panini was dealing with you know, the situation that were coming, the market changed a lot, the full of price changed. And so we have been aware about what was going on around us. And for this reason, for this reason we designed and developed many kind of products that were able to work with every kind of fuel in order to reach the market demand. And this is an outlook of the most common fuel that I've been using in this field. And it's important then to compare it with biomass and why can biomass be competitive. And we start with coal. It's got a relative value between 5,000 and 7,000 kilopatt per kilos. It's got some advantages that are the low price because nowadays it's pretty cheap. So you can get good results in buying get high volatile, low sulfur, but see, you know, it takes a lot of volume because it's solid. We have a uh, high investment cost for storage, for transport, logistic problem, and also the maintenance cost because it's like really dusty. It's got uh, a low HGI value, that is things that is hard to grind. Of course, we have an emission issue because it's made of carbon and we release CO2 I mean, in the atmosphere. And then we have the problem of ashes that can be really sticky and can, you know, can decrease the quality of my product. Then there is the gap, which is really a common solution here in the UK. You got an high calorific value. It's low cost of installation. It's really good fine performance. It's kind of a clean tool, low maintenance, because it's really easy, as we can see, it's pretty simple dealing with the transportation of gas since uh, it's a gas. And but still the fuel cost is really high and it's really variable among the year. And still we have a secret issue because we're working with, with gas. Then we have the heavy oil that is uh, got a high calorific value of 9,500 kilocal. It's good fire in the zone. But still, as well, we have the oil price that is really variable along the year. We have maintenance costs and emission issue, of course, because we have all fossil fuel. And the petroleum <coughs> coke is really similar to, to the coal, actually, but it's got a high AG value. That means that it's easy to grind and to have better result uh, in the fire zone. It's still cheap. 
but the problem is that it got low but volatile, and so sometimes it started to get high temperature in the kiln, and of course the big investment cost, as you can see, we did all the transportation fee the client, bring the, the coal or the red top on the top of the kiln, and sometimes it's, of course, more expensive than the gas fee. And then here come the biomass, we have a wide range about solid biomass that I'm talking about today. Caloric value go between the 1,400 kilotons kilo, it depends which kind of biomass you're dealing with. We've got some advantages that can be the low cost and the CO2 free that you can have from biomass. But of course it's difficult to, to find because it's strictly related from the landscape where you are, what territory around you can give you. We have big volume to be managed because it's solid <coughs> and it's got low calorie, low calorie value. Then we should analyze the general global, the global energy trend. And we have higher <coughs> energy demand and price, structural change in oil and gas industry, prospect of irreversible uh, climate change, and demand for energy security. Then we have some projection. <coughs> of course, that projection, but we see the increase that we're going to have in oil and, and natural gas in the next <coughs> 30 years. And, and the world energy will use 6% more than what we are using now in just 20 years from now. And 80% from this energy will generate generated by burning fossil fuel. These are our projections, these are similar ones, but we see that the coal, now the oil and the gas, is much cheaper than the other ones. And so we can expect the increasing price of, of this fuel. And, and there are just scenarios that mm, they are doing. They are like, for example, here I want to show a good case and a bad case. The red one is the bad one, where if it's assuming the conditions are the same of today, if nothing changed, we would have an increase of 65% of CO2 emission by 2030. And if you consider the blue scenario, that is the one you know, from, I don't know if anyone knows it, like two, watt, two kilowatt society, but you know, taking a lot of care about CO2 emission, we will see that a 30% of CO2 emission increase by 30%. So of course, we cannot you know, assume that the CO2 emission will be clear in the future, but our goal is to reduce as much as we can in the future. And to do this, we can assume that there's going to be a rapid transition to low carbon fuel. It's important the efficiency of the of our plan, and we should look for something environmentally binding energy system for for our country. Then it's important to see the CO2 trend. CO2 is mainly comes from coal, oil, and gas, as we because as we all know, they are fossil fuel. And this is an historical chart of the CO2, as you can see in here we have the <coughs> revolution at the 19th century, then it's like exponentially increased and probably if we would plot today we would be out of this chart. And so this is the direction we're going now and this is why we should take care about this issue. This is the prediction of the CO2 that they did. Of course, if the oil and the coal and the natural gas are increasing, the CO2 will increase as well. If nothing uh, is going to change, <coughs> this is why we should take care about this. And the two paths that we are taking care of mostly, we need more low CO2 emission power plants, and these are improving the energy efficiency of what we have now. So that means better combustion, no heat dissipation, whatever you can do, you have to do it. And then the use of renewable that are often are now on the market. And for this reason, biomass has a huge potential in the future. Um, why biomass? So biomass first is a CO2 close cycle. Because we burn, of course, when we burn biomass, we, pr we produce CO2. But at the same time, when the biomass grows, it consumes CO2. So if we do this properly, it would be a CO2 <coughs> and at the same time, you can produce from this because, uh, the, because of the CO2 certificate. 
that uh, you can sell it. For example, you can see that in the picture below, if we don't reach or we don't, if you do not, not, do not exceed our limit, then we can sell our CO2 certificate to companies that, for example, they exceed it and make it profitable. And sometimes it can also give flexibility on fuel if we consider to integrate our system with existing one. For example, there is an example of was a gas line, and we apply a solid biomass system. <coughs> so, and any time the, the team could work with both of them, or just one or the other one, depending from the price of the fuel, what is more convenient, and this is can easily done. Of course, as I said before, we can see the feeding line. I mean, it's not so easy because of the big volume that we have to transport but still is totally feasible and if the fuel is cheap then it's also convenient to do it many times these are the pro but of course as i said the local value big volume to deal and this brings to logistic issue because i for example transport the fuel the biomass in my plant if it's not close and i have to transport on top of the of the kiln there are also technical issues, but <coughs> luckily we can use our existing technology to solve it. For example, biomass can have the problem of ash, and, but we can use our existing technology how we solve it in, in the cold case. For example, here we see how can ash can be sticky on the product of the bricks. And we have an ash removal system for the killing star that is able to clean it. Uh, and we can apply the same solution also for biomass uh, but Nini has been already, you know, dealing with uh, many different solid biomass. And here is an example of what we try already. And these are palm oil, can shell, olive oil, sunflower has, Ukraine has Australia, so that's Malaysia, Valley Europe. And the main point is the choose of the biomass is not what is the best for my plant, but is what I have around me. For example, if in Malaysia, they have, so does Malaysia, that makes work to use it as the pellet fuel Europe or the granas in Australia. It's not about, I mean, you should avoid the transportation from the other part of the world of the biomass because it's a lot of volume and few energy. This is the utility of biomass. There are some technical aspects and some economic aspects. The technical aspect, of course, are availability, first supply through the year, unless I don't have an integration of my gas system, then I can switch whenever I want to what is most more convenient. Then uh, the lower heating value, <coughs> the ash problem that I have to take care, and the humidity. Humidity because most of the time the biomass is <coughs> through the solid one, they have moisture content, and then what means that I can find them cheap, but I have to remove the moisture and make them dry before burning. And then, of course, is a cost. So, you know, these are quality <coughs> value. That's why to give a statement <coughs> of what I'm talking about, you see, I mean, all the fossil fuel are much higher, and uh, biomass can range a lot from 25 to 10, and still they can have a lot of moisture on it. And so, there are every time we try to <coughs> see what biomass is, I mean, the customers is giving us and we try to find the best solution how to deal with it. <coughs> there is no general rule. Every case for us, you know, we have to take care, analyze it, and find the best solution for the customer. Then, from an economic point of view, there is the market price of the biomass that most of the time is really cheap. And also the CO2 allocation, to make profit from the CO2 certificate. Of course, there is a, on the other side the investment cost that has to do because of the, of, the, of the new burner that you have to apply in your plant and the profit that you can have. And of course, there is the political support, especially with the social location, is how much you have to pay for the signature too. If you, I would have not pay nothing, then no one would care about you know using Burma. But if you have to pay taxes on it, and probably will be make more convenient for you to do it. These are, you know, table about biomass in UK. The important you know, uh, numbers are the net prolific value, as we see, it's really low for the wood chips, for the, it's about 
12 giga, uh, gigajoule per ton, is that it's much higher for the fossil fuel. And the energy density, as we see, about 5,000 megajoule meter square. But if you go with natural gas, it's 35 megajoule, 35,000 megajoule per meter square, it's much more. We did also a, a small analysis. Of course, we did some assumption in the plan that was about uh, 50, 50 million bricks a year. We consider the uh, year lead value, the CO2. Uh, <coughs> the CO2 produced, for example, for the biomass is all zero. We take as a reference the wood pellet. And this is how much per day you should have paid. And comparison to pellet, you know, wood chips, that is cheaper, of course, will be zero, but we didn't care about the moisture that you have. So, of course, it's not a realistic value. But still, there is no. Um, no, I kind of, you can save actually money for me because all the other fuel are, are higher than the, than the wood pellet. Of course, we did the assumption of 12 uh, euro ton per CO2 equivalent. Okay, we already uh, experienced you know, using burning biomass. These are some examples of our product. We have the, the first one, <coughs> it's, we have an amber mill to try and get even better. And the last one, for example, is especially developed for a developing country like Brazil, where they use a lot of biomass, and it's more or less a distributor. And this is, as I said before, the implementation of the gas system. So, conclusion, biomass has a high potential, especially for an microfinance solution, and also because of the profit that you can have with it. As Bernini, we, this is our goal, work with you, and your ideas to make it happen, and to make it feasible. Nowadays, we already did many installations of biomass all over the world, as we can see from the map. For example, we already work in Brazil, in Australia, and in Malaysia, where they're working with sawdust, and then also in Europe, in Italy, for example, we we work with olive, olive ask, and then Croatia sunflower, and then there is Ukraine uh, as well. So that's all. I think we're out of time. Yeah,